Hello everybody and welcome to your lesson for today. My name is Kyle Broda with FullSkillsExamPrep.com. As always, we're here to help you pass your ICCRC Full Skills Exam to become a regulated Canadian immigration consultant. And this is a pretty important topic to discuss because it's obviously on your exam. So, just as I said, the Safe Third Country Agreement is on your ICCRC Full Skills Exam. We consider this to be a very high value area to study because it's pretty small, the whole, uh, the whole article is really 500 words, uh, and you're likely to have a question on this on your full skills exam. As always, don't worry, we've got you 100% covered. If you have the materials, you can refer to the test day data book on page 14, and all of your exam simulations have a question on this as well, as well as, of course, uh, the answers and the references. So let's talk about what this agreement actually is. It is sort of a branch of the protected persons area of immigration. Uh, with this as well, a refugee claimant who arrives in Canada or the US must claim refugee status or for refugee protection in the first country that they enter. So somebody cannot go to land in Canada and then decide that they would prefer to go to the States to claim uh, protected person status. The opposite is the same thing. A person cannot go to the US and then decide that he would prefer to uh, get protection in Canada and then come over here and uh, claim protection. However, the big point here is that there are exceptions to this agreement. So just to uh, start off, we'll give you a question. Remember that this is the whole basis of our system is we give you questions and you decipher the answers and that helps you to study this. So the question that we have here is Michelle and his family are refugee claimants from Cuba. They arrived in the US but would prefer to apply for protection in Canada because they want to live in Winnipeg. Can they go to Canada and apply? So you're probably thinking no, because it's exactly what we talked about about uh, 15 seconds ago. And with that, you are correct, except it's absolutely essential to know if they qualify for an exception to the agreement. And that will lead you towards the correct answer for your exam. All right, so just as I said, if they qualify for an exception to the agreement, then they might be able to apply. But without any knowledge of if they qualify for an exception, the answer is, of course, no. For these exceptions to the agreement, again, all of this is in your test day data booklets so that you have really easy access to it on test day. Uh, there are family member exceptions, unaccompanied minors, document holder exceptions, and public interest exceptions. We'll go through each one in detail to give you a better idea of what to look for in your exam. A very important note is that if somebody wouldn't qualify to enter regularly anyways, they, this uh, safe third country agreement wouldn't cover them. So for example, if someone is a terrorist or, uh, has, uh, or is inadmissible because of serious criminality or something like that, they won't be able to make a claim for refugee protection anyways. With the family member exceptions, if somebody has a family member who is a Canadian citizen, permanent resident, is someone protected under uh, the Canadian immigration uh, as, a, as a protected person as well, someone who maybe applied for refugee status but that has not been accepted yet, uh, if somebody had a removal order but that removal order got stayed, if someone holds or has, has a family member who holds a work permit or study permit uh, or somebody who actually is in Canada and made an application for uh, protected person status as well. So if that initial claimant arrives in Canada and has a family member who is any of these, then the safe third country agreement would not apply to this person. So an example would be somebody who, let's say Michel from the previous example, if he 
happened to have a sister in Canada who is studying, then he would qualify for one of these exceptions and would be able to apply in Canada even though he landed in the States first. Uh, a very important uh, area to look at as well is that family members are a little bit different under this agreement than you might think under the regular family classes. So for this one here, you have spouse, legal guardian, child, similar to uh, all the other uh, immigration classes such as father, mother. Brother and sister is a bit different. Uh, usually you don't have that in any immigration uh, classes. Grandfather, grandmother, grandchild, uncles and aunts as well is one thing you're going to have to uh, think about as well for this. Nephews and nieces and of course uh, spouses. So just like I said, you're going to have to really look uh, and don't get tricked into thinking that somebody, just because somebody has a uncle or aunt or a brother and sister or nephew and niece, and usually they're not considered nuclear family members, so it's usually a bit more difficult to uh, apply for family reunification with these people. Uh, under the Safe Third Country Agreement, they're considered family members. So again, this one here would be eligible for the exception to uh, the Safe Third Country Agreement. And again, if you have somebody who lands in the States, has a nephew or niece uh, who is one of the previous um, people over here, then that person can apply for protected person status. And now I'm not saying that the nephew or niece can apply, but the person, in this case, Michelle could apply. Alright, so again it's important to note that if the person qualifies for an exception to the safe third country agreement, it doesn't mean that he's automatically given protected person status. He just has the opportunity to apply just like everybody else uh, for um, protected person status in Canada. Okay, there's another exception that is unaccompanied minors. So with this one here, people who show up and they're under the age of 18, they're not with their mother, father, legal guardian, they're not married or anything like that, and they don't have a mother, father, or legal guardian in Canada or the States, would also qualify for this exception. We also have document holder exceptions. So the list is over here. It's also in your test date data book as well. But let's say Michelle, again, went from Cuba to uh, New Jersey and then went to Canada and applied for uh, refugee protection in Canada, protected persons status in Canada. Normally, he wouldn't be able to because he landed in the States first. But if he has a Canadian visa, a work permit, study permit, or another uh, another permit that allows him to enter Canada, then he would be able to apply for protected person status in Canada rather than the States. All right, the last exception is public interest. So with this one here, it's it's incredibly rare. And it seems like it's sort of just to cover up a loophole, really. So in Canada, we don't have the death penalty, of course. Um, and if somebody in the States uh, kills somebody or something like that and gets the death penalty, what they're saying here is that he might be able to uh, go to Canada because he would be an exception to that rule. However... Of course, with this as well, he would be inadmissible anyways just because he um, killed somebody. So if he violated human rights or serious criminality, that person would be a danger to the public and he wouldn't be allowed to enter uh, anyways. All right, so this agreement is in effect at Canada-US border crossings. That includes people entering by train or airports. Uh, as well. 
As always, we have practice questions for you because this is really the way that you uh, improve your studying is from doing practice questions, reading the references, and then your assessment uh, to see if you got it correct or incorrect. So stay tuned. We've got a couple of practice questions for you coming up with this. And as always, a big thank you from both myself and Lizette uh, for letting us help you pass your ICCRC full skills exam. Come visit our website at fullskillsexamprep.com. We have a blog, Facebook, everything really to keep you updated uh, all the way up to your exam. And even after your exam finishes you and you pass and you become an RCIC, we're still here to help. All right, so thank you very much and have a great day.